Hey folks, I have mixed feelings about fantasy football. On one hand, it's low-key gambling. That's what it is. And it amplifies our obsession with football. This obsession distracts fantasy football participants from seeing the NFL as a modern-day plantation with slightly higher salaries, slightly greater risks. Cats are kind of distracted by being fantasy plantation owners, as if our blinding allegiance to favorite teams, favorite players, isn't already distracted enough. Now, on the other hand, my familiarity with the game and business of football allows me to create some simple, elegant roster management solutions using my analytic skills. This obsession provides me a pretty clear business opportunity. Opportunities are few and far between and they're always disguised as work. Sometimes this work includes cleaning out my closet. Let me explain. Last week, fantasy football gave me an opportunity to connect with the men in my disconnected family. Now, by my observation, the men in my family don't know each other very well. We kind of fake our way through conversations, or we just keep it real shallow and talk about sports. It's tough to watch these conversations. It's a lot tougher to participate. But let's leave men alone, and let's focus on one man, me. See. I don't know the dudes in my family very well. Now I can guess that they might see me as a smart, quiet, nerdy, techie kind of dude with a really big mouth. Yeah, all that together. Now maybe my mouth is not as big now, but if that's still my rep, I know I earned that in my younger days where I was an acknowledged handful. Now, on some days, I still am. I'm still a truth teller, but I'm learning to tell a more graceful truth instead of the harsh truth that I knew so well. Ah, so maybe I should lighten up on calling the NFL a modern-day plantation, huh? Nah, man, that, that shoe fits. But I digress. My personal family disconnection stems from some not so pleasant childhood memories. Memories of conflicts that dominated our frequent family gatherings. We used to get together a lot, like every month. And then one day, all the gatherings stopped. Now, frankly, I didn't miss them. I was further disconnected by a lot of comments, right? Some were direct, but most of them are your subtle, microaggressive ones about both my mother and me, especially in the wake of my parents' divorce. After that, man, I mean, that was a sensitive time. I'm a pretty sensitive cat, so all the nerves were kind of raw. I can see all of that. It's a lethal combination. And that combo led to a series of independent, unfortunate, awkward events with several different family members that were never discussed, never resolved. They were just observed and they were absorbed. And they were correlated by a dude who has the memory of an elephant. That's a gift and a curse. What do I mean? I mean that I encountered family members, young and old, at different times, in different states, on different holidays and other special occasions, and had disturbingly similar negative experiences. And I memorialized the experiences through the comments. Comments like, uh, but I don't think you're the right man for the job. That was actually said to my father in front of me. Not to me, said to him, but it still 
got up in me a little bit. Uh, but but you too fat to sing a Michael Jackson song. I, that was it to me. Well, I'm the adult. You should be calling me. Well, we can never get in touch with you because nobody ever has your current phone number. Oh, we never see you. <laughs> All right, you're making some money now. You can do a little better. Oh, we didn't know you were following us to the game. We didn't mean to leave you. Look at you looking all masculine now. Oh, man, what you did was great. But you know, it would have been even better if you could have put it together as like a little PowerPoint. Not, not the context of none of that is important, but I mean, I, I, I know what the context is. And during any visit, man, it started to feel like the conversation in the room always changed when I walked in. You ever, you ever experienced that? Like I remember it changing when the kids who were born out of wedlock would visit our family gathering after they had spent time with their uh, their other family. They'd walk in, nobody really knew them, so nobody knew what to say. So I guess that was how it went for me too, perhaps. Now, right or wrong, I concluded that I was not part of the family clique. Feel me now. Our family definitely moves in cliques, and I ain't in none of them. I figured the best way to keep it together it might be to stay away, keep a safe distance. Now, I softened that stance a lot when I married my wife, Keisha. Keisha changed a lot of stuff in my life. And I softened it even more when we had our daughter, Hannah. Life changes, man, both of those. Love those ladies. Experiencing joy is going to help you heal a lot of hurts. It won't heal them, but it'll sure help you heal because you have now this foundation and platform of success and happiness that'll help you deal with some of that other stuff. Keisha and Hannah encouraged me to be intentional about sharing our life with my family and about protecting our peace because we know what lies beneath all those interactions. Well, maybe we don't know. We just know it's something that we don't really want to fool with. But maintaining the balance between reaching out and then setting and maintaining those boundaries is tricky. You gotta, gotta navigate that. But it's necessary. I made a move. I figured that supporting family endeavors with all my servant strengths and talents, my considerable servant strengths and talents, would be a positive step. Now to do this, I suspended my long-standing rule about being careful letting certain folks see me sweat or work hard. I still had to be careful though. Why? All the traditional family strongholds I experienced, we're talking verbal microaggression, control, narcissism, envy, selfishness, See, they might have been softened by time and space, maybe even a little aging and maturity, but they're still there. They're still there. And they've been passed down to successive generations with like perfect DNA reprints. Now coming together to work purposefully, that helps set egos and agendas aside. It, it really helps. It also keeps the strongholds at bay while you continue to pray that they are broken. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. This gives me hope for healing and change. Providing hope for healing and change is my life's work. It is why I breathe and move and act. So showing support by helping to carry the load that became my simple strategy to deal positively with folks who tend to act a little funny with me. But I gotta say this again, it's a simple strategy. But boy, it takes some balance to make it a safe strategy.
anyway, let's let's get back to the fantasy football opportunity. So, so one of my dozens of cousins, this one played college football, went to the same college I went to, had an NFL tryout many years ago. He invited me to join the Family Fantasy Football League for this season. He invited me last season, but I declined based on several previously mentioned elements of this confession, if you will. And this year, though, I said, okay, I can at least volunteer to run the league as its commissioner. I can do that. This would give me both family fellowship and business opportunities because now I can test out my analytic roster management tools, man. I can let cats in the league use them for free so I can see how they work. So I volunteered myself and I accelerated development of my tools so I would have it ready for the upcoming draft. And then my cousin announced to the other league members, uh, said something like, hey, there's going to be helping out this year. Now in hindsight, I think this meant Derek is going to be my assistant this year. Now, if he had said that, or if I had picked up on it directly before it was announced publicly, I could have handed that off. Hey, man, I'm volunteering to run the league, not be your assistant. I kind of know better about being the assistant. The assistants aren't usually treated very well, especially by a horrible boss. I'm not trying to find out whether you're a horrible boss, because I ain't looking for no job. Now, I know I'm a servant leader. I'm a doer who sets the tone, the leadership tone, with a quiet, often silent example. That speaks loud. You see what I'm doing, it makes you want to do something. You see me doing well, makes you want to do better. And I walk closely, though, only with other servant leaders who submit themselves similarly. I create hard, permanent boundaries with those who step on my neck when I bow to them. It's a very simple way to know with whom you can roll. Now, I learned this global truth by dealing with the cold, cruel world. I apply the wisdom locally, though, to teach family members how they need to treat me. Now, I already know I need to find my way out of this situation. It ain't safe. In fairness, though, my cousin probably doesn't know much about me, how I feel, or how I operate. Now, I would guess that his in-person familiarity with me might be limited to watching me sweat at our last several family events. Folks will get it twisted when they see you toil. That's why I try not to work in front of people that much. You take a misconception like that, mix it with a little arrogance and some convenient ignorance, that'll get you on the wrong road with folks, man especially family members, anybody else who can take you for granted, mistake kindness and meekness for weakness, or confuse service with servitude. Now, I'm a handy dude, man, no, no doubt about it. Check that, I'm a handy man, and I'm the proud son of a handy man. Now, I am my wife's, my mother's, my father's, and my daughter's handyman. I ain't nobody else's handyman. I always have the right of first refusal when asked to do anything. And I do need to be asked respectfully. Now, either way, the potential lack of mutual respect with my cousin, see, that's on my radar now. Now, as a potential that will become real soon enough. At first came a text message directive to send correspondence to other members asking them to vote on dues for this year because no dues were collected last year. Whoa, 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 whoa stop. That sounds like I'm being assigned bad cop duty in order to avoid dealing with something that probably should have been dealt with. 
So I responded to the directive with a gentle pushback there. They asked about, hey, last year's expenses and suggested how they could be recouped through this year's budget. Now I then asked them to call me, man, so we could talk and told them that any talk about cleaning up last year with dues payments this year that needs to come from the dude who ran things last year. That's him, not me. Text messaging is a rather microaggressive way to avoid real-time discussion and rebuttal. Very good at avoiding the rebuttal. It's a bad way to communicate. It's an even worse way to handle your business. Now, after agreeing to talk, which to me says, no more texting, man. No more texting. Now, I get another directive to instead just send a poll to members with all the suggestions that I just made. Cousin, please. No thanks, cousin. I see how I got this job. And I resigned. So, yeah, how did I get this job? I got it by trying to do too much. By relaxing some boundaries that should probably remain intact. See, if I revile fantasy football as much as I say I do, and I do, and find it tough to only talk about sports to avoid real topics like discovering the roots of our strained family interactions. What was I trying to accomplish by helping to manage a league of non-paying relatives who made last year's commissionment self-finance the whole season? That is my first answer. I was trying to connect. I was trying to see how a league runs and I'm trying to test my little roster management tools. There's my second answer. I need to connect while respecting my personal boundaries. That is, I need to connect by mutually engaging in purposeful, direct service that makes all egos and agendas subside. To continue my second answer, this probably means that I should run my own fantasy football league. I should be the commissioner. I should draft all the teams quickly using my tool. That's what the tool is for. It's a roster management tool. And I should let the season play out while I ignore it and all of its obsessive distractions. You figure that player injuries, bye weeks, all that stuff will balance. You don't have to be going in there every week switching players around and stuff. Just let it all play out. Man, I hate taking the long way to wisdom. But sometimes the winding path provides a more memorable lesson. So I'm thinking the battle is won now, the lesson is done, but wait, there's more. Now it may go without saying that my cousin warmed my chili pot just a little bit. So let me usa. I've got a track record. I've got a bad track record of cutting people off and just leaving it like that. I don't let anybody or anything get me warm twice. And carrying the burden of a fence though, that's, that's a hard way to live. It's a hard way to live. This is a little more subtle though than unforgiveness, but it can be just as burdensome. When I carry a fence, sometimes nothing real major has happened, but I decide, see, I'm not going to even let it get to that with the person who has already offended me. That, that might go too far. That might go too far. Because if I'm merciless in judgment, then I will be shown no mercy. That's James 2.13. So the need for boundaries is clear, but I'm learning to stop short of finishing my stories of teaching people how to treat me with a piercing period. And instead, I'm learning how to finish them with kind question marks. Thank you, PJ. So what's a kind question mark for this one? <laughs> I had to sleep on this one, man, because it wasn't coming to me right away. 
But I did wake up this morning with a simple story. I'm going to share that with you in close. My daddy and his older sister are two people that have not always spoken life into my spirit. Let's say it that way. They have not always spoken life into each other either. I've learned that they both inherited this trait and they may have been bruised by it first before becoming the bruisers. Feel me? Now I have warred with them both silently for years for things that they said to me, man. And believe it or not though, I stopped the war. Now I managed to set boundaries with them both and still have sincere, purposeful relationships with them both. Imagine that. I think the boundaries helped. They had boundaries with my daddy. Yeah. Yeah, it helped. And it also helps that they're both older, man, because it reminds me every time I talk to them that time is fleeting and life is fragile. They're both role models, though, for an approach that uses the kind question mark. What can we do together? That's a kind question mark. Instead of a piercing period, leave them crazy jokers alone. Yes, that's a piercing period. Now this cousin in this episode is the youngest son of the aforementioned dad's older sister, my, my aunt. So a reasonable kind question mark for him can be derived from my experience with his mom. They might even be informed by his mom herself because she knows him way better than I do. Thank God that I still have a relationship with his mother, greatly assisted by the boundaries and the kind question mark. Say that.